picture this. A vast, untamed wilderness stretches before you, shrouded in the dim light of dawn. The air is sharp with the chill of an ice age morning, carrying the scent of damp earth and distant smoke. In the shadows, a woolly mammoth trumpets, its massive tusks glinting as it stomps through the frost-covered grass. Nearby, a pack of dire wolves howls, their eyes glowing in the half-light. In this brutal, breathtaking world, two groups of early humans face each other across a frozen river. One group, stocky and muscular, grips heavy spears, Neanderthals, masters of this harsh land. The other, leaner and more agile, clutches lighter weapons, Homo sapiens, newcomers from a distant continent. Their eyes lock, not with hatred, but with the raw instinct to survive. A single misstep could mean starvation, extinction. This is no tale of heroes or villains, but a saga of survival carved in blood and bone. Welcome to the prehistoric battlegrounds, where the clash of human species shaped our past and whispers warnings for our future. Stay with me. This journey into the depths of prehistory will unravel the roots of conflict and what it means to be human. Let's travel back 100,000 years to a time when the Earth was a mosaic of extremes. Glaciers carved deep valleys across Europe and Asia, while dense forests of pine and birch clung to warmer pockets. Vast grasslands teemed with megafauna, towering mammoths, hulking rhinoceroses, and swift-footed horses. The climate was a relentless force, swinging from bone-chilling cold to brief, sweltering summers. In this world, survival demanded resilience, cunning, and cooperation. Neanderthals, the dominant human species in this rugged landscape, were built for the challenge. Their stocky frames, broad chests, and powerful limbs were perfect for conserving heat and enduring brutal winters. Their large nasal cavities likely warmed the icy air they breathed, while their heavy brow ridges framed eyes that may have been adapted for low-light conditions, ideal for hunting at dawn or dusk. These were not the brutish cavemen of old stereotypes, but sophisticated survivors, intimately attuned to their environment. Meanwhile, Homo sapiens, our direct ancestors, were beginning their slow migration out of Africa. Leaner and taller, they were built for endurance, capable of covering vast distances in pursuit of game. Their lighter skin and adaptation to absorb more sunlight in northern latitudes marked their transition to new lands but they were stepping into a world already claimed by Neanderthals and perhaps others like the enigmatic Denisovans, whose traces linger in the DNA of modern populations in Asia and Oceania. This was a world of scarcity and abundance. A single mammoth could feed a band for weeks, but a failed hunt could spell disaster. Rivers teemed with fish, but only for those who knew where to cast their nets. Caves offered shelter, but only if you could defend them from rival groups or predators like cave bears. In this high-stakes game, territory was everything. Control a fertile valley, and your people thrived. Lose it, and you face starvation. It's no wonder that conflict became as natural as breathing. To understand why Neanderthals and Homo sapiens clashed, we need to look deeper into the instincts that shaped them. Conflict isn't unique to humans. Our closest living relatives, chimpanzees, offer a glimpse into its origins. Male chimps form patrols, stalking the borders of their territory to drive off or kill rivals from neighboring groups. These brutal skirmishes, documented in African forests, echo behaviors that likely emerged in a shared ancestor some seven million years ago. Neanderthals, sharing 99.7% of our DNA, almost certainly inherited this territorial drive. Their robust skeletons, thick bones, powerful muscles, suggest they were built for physical confrontations, whether wrestling a bison or fending off a rival. But Neanderthals were more than fighters. They were innovators. Archaeological finds reveal their ingenuity. Flint blades honed to razor sharpness, 
spears sturdy enough to pierce a mammoth's hide, and hearths that sustained fires through bitter nights. They hunted in coordinated groups, targeting megafauna like elk, bison, and even the formidable woolly rhinoceros. Such hunts required planning, communication, and trust, skills that also made them formidable in conflict. Their caves hold clues to a richer inner life. Necklaces of eagle talons and seashells, red ochre paintings on cave walls, and stone circles that may have served as ritual sanctuaries. If Neanderthals shared our capacity for creativity, it's reasonable to assume they shared our capacity for organized violence. The archaeological record supports this. In sites across Europe, Neanderthal bones bear the scars of a violent world. Skulls show blunt trauma, likely from clubs or stones. Forearms, often broken in defensive postures, suggest desperate attempts to ward off blows. One striking example comes from Shanidar Cave in Iraq, where a Neanderthal skeleton reveals a spear wound to the chest, a wound so precise it suggests a deliberate attack, not a hunting mishap. These injuries mirror patterns seen in later human conflicts, hinting at tribal warfare that could have pitted Neanderthal against Neanderthal or Neanderthal against Homo sapiens. Imagine a Neanderthal band gathered around a flickering fire in a European valley, their breath visible in the frigid air. Across the river, a Homo sapiens group watches, their eyes fixed on the same herd of deer grazing nearby. Both groups know the stakes. That herd could mean survival through the winter or starvation. Neither will yield. What follows is no Hollywood battle, but a tense, chaotic skirmish. Stones fly, spears thrust, and shouts pierce the dawn. Some fall, others flee, but the outcome shapes who controls this vital hunting ground. Evidence suggests such encounters were common. Neanderthals dominated Europe and parts of Asia for over 300,000 years, thriving in environments Homo sapiens initially struggled to navigate. Their intimate knowledge of the land, where to find flint for tools, how to trap game in narrow canyons, which plants could heal or poison, gave them a tactical edge. Their muscular builds made them fearsome in close combat, their large eyes possibly aiding ambushes in low light. Homo sapiens, however, brought their own strengths. Their lighter frames allowed swift, coordinated movements, ideal for hit-and-run tactics. Over time, they developed advanced weapons, atlatls, spear throwers, that extended their range, and later bows that could strike from a distance. Larger group sizes, sustained by efficient hunting and gathering, gave them numerical superiority. This wasn't a single war, but a prolonged struggle spanning tens of thousands of years. Neanderthals held their ground, slowing Homo sapiens' expansion out of Africa. Interbreeding, evidenced by the 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA in many modern humans, suggests moments of contact, perhaps peaceful exchanges of tools or mates. But competition dominated. As Homo sapiens spread, they claimed territories once held by Neanderthals, pushing them into ever smaller enclaves. To truly grasp this conflict, let's explore how these early humans lived. Neanderthals were nomadic, moving with the seasons to follow game or seek shelter. Their camps, often in caves or rock shelters, were temporary but sophisticated. At sites like La Cote de saint Berlade in Jersey, archaeologists found piles of mammoth and rhinoceros bones, evidence of coordinated hunts where entire herds were driven off cliffs, a testament to Neanderthal strategy and teamwork. They used fire not just for warmth but to cook, hardening spear tips and processing hides. Their diet was diverse, meat from large game, fish from rivers, and plants like berries, roots, and even roasted pine nuts, as found in Gibraltar caves. Homo sapiens, by contrast, brought innovations that tipped the balance. Their tools, often made from bone or antler, were lighter and more versatile. At sites like Blombos Cave in South Africa, early Homo sapiens left behind engraved ochre and shell beads, suggesting symbolic thinking that may have strengthened group cohesion. Their ability to exploit a wider range of resources, fish, small game, and plants, allowed them to support larger populations. 
This numerical edge was critical in conflicts, as larger groups could overwhelm smaller ones, even if the latter were stronger individually. Socially, both species likely lived in tight-knit bands of 20 to 50 individuals, bound by kinship and cooperation. Neanderthals buried their dead, sometimes with grave goods like flowers or tools, as seen at Shanidar Cave, hinting at rituals or belief systems. Homo sapiens, too, showed early signs of complex culture, cave art, musical instruments like bone flutes, and trade networks that spanned hundreds of miles. These cultural advancements didn't just enrich their lives, they likely enhanced their ability to organize, strategize, and fight. At its core, prehistoric conflict was about survival. Territory meant access to food, water, and shelter, resources that were finite and fiercely contested. A single valley could sustain a band for generations. Losing it could mean extinction. This mirrors conflicts throughout human history, from ancient tribes battling over riverbanks to medieval wars over fertile plains. Our territorial instincts, rooted in millions of years of evolution, drove both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens to fight for what they needed. But there's more to it. Conflict wasn't just about resources, it was about identity. Bands likely saw themselves as distinct, tied to their land and their way of life. A rival group wasn't just a threat to survival, but to their very existence as a people. This sense of us versus them is evident in chimpanzee behavior and persists in modern human conflicts. Neanderthals, with their shared DNA and behaviors, likely felt this as keenly as Homo sapiens did. Yet there were moments of connection. Interbreeding suggests encounters that weren't always violent. Imagine a Neanderthal and Homo sapiens band meeting at a river's edge, not to fight but to trade, flint for furs, or knowledge of local plants for a new hunting technique. These exchanges may have enriched both groups, but they were fleeting. The pressure of population growth and shrinking resources made conflict inevitable. What caused the Neanderthals extinction around 40,000 years ago? One theory points to Homo sapiens' superiority in warfare. Advanced weapons like bows allowed them to strike from a distance, negating Neanderthals' physical strength. Better resource management, more efficient hunting, broader diets, supported larger Homo sapiens populations, overwhelming smaller Neanderthal bands. This wasn't a single decisive battle, but a slow war of attrition, with Homo sapiens gradually claiming territory. Another perspective emphasizes chance. Computer simulations suggest Neanderthals lived in small, scattered groups, rarely exceeding 50 individuals. Small populations are vulnerable to the alley effect, where low numbers hinder recovery from setbacks like disease or poor harvests. Inbreeding, common in isolated groups, may have weakened their resilience. Homo sapiens' arrival could have exacerbated this, fragmenting Neanderthal territories and limiting their ability to interbreed or migrate. A harsh winter, a failed hunt, or a plague could have pushed them past the point of no return. A third possibility blends both ideas. Homo sapiens' expansion likely pressured Neanderthals but not through outright genocide. Competition for resources, occasional skirmishes, and environmental stress may have combined to tip the scales. Neanderthals weren't necessarily inferior, they were simply outlasted by a species with greater numbers, adaptability, and perhaps a touch of luck. To bring this world to life, let's explore three archaeological discoveries that illuminate the violence and resilience of prehistoric life. Krapina, Croatia, 130,000 years ago. At this Neanderthal site, researchers found over 800 bones from dozens of individuals. Many bore cut marks and fractures, some from weapons, others suggesting cannibalism, possibly ritualistic as a way to honor the dead, or desperate, driven by starvation. The bones paint a picture of a community under strain, fighting to survive in a world of scarcity. Le Roi, France, 50,000 years ago. A Neanderthal jawbone here shows marks of defleshing, 
possibly a trophy taken in conflict. This wasn't a random act, but a deliberate one, suggesting a culture where victory was marked by grim rituals. The site also holds Homo sapiens artifacts, hinting at a contested region where two species clashed. Shanidar Cave, Iraq, 60,000 years ago. The famous Shanidar I Neanderthal, a male aged 30 to 45, had a spear wound to his rib cage, piercing vital organs. He likely died quickly, but other injuries, broken bones, arthritis, show he lived a hard life. Was he ambushed by Homo sapiens? Caught in a tribal feud? His bones are a testament to a world where violence was a constant shadow. These finds aren't just relics, they're stories of real people who face the same fears and hopes we do, fighting for their place in a merciless world. What can we learn from this ancient struggle? First, conflict is part of our nature, but so is creativity. Neanderthals painted caves, crafted jewelry, and built sanctuaries, acts that mirror our own drive to create meaning. Homo sapiens took this further, developing art, music, and trade networks that laid the foundation for civilization. These impulses, to fight and to create, are two sides of the same coin, rooted in our need to survive and thrive. Second, the Neanderthal story warns us of fragility. Their extinction wasn't just about war, but about vulnerability to change. Small populations, isolated and unable to adapt, succumb to pressures we can only imagine. Today, we face our own challenges, climate change, resource scarcity, global conflicts. The lesson is clear. Adaptability and cooperation are as vital now as they were 100,000 years ago. Finally, the interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens reminds us of our shared humanity. They weren't so different from us, and their legacy lives on in our DNA. Every time we face a challenge, we draw on the resilience of those ancient survivors. Their story is our story. As we stand in the 21st century, far from the caves and spears of prehistory, the echoes of those ancient wars still resonate. Conflict shaped our species, from Neanderthal skirmishes to modern battles. But our capacity for creativity, cooperation, and innovation offers a path forward. The Neanderthals didn't survive, but they left us a gift. Their strength, their ingenuity, encoded in our genes. The question is, can we rise above our instincts to build a future where survival doesn't mean destruction? The lesson is simple but profound. We are not bound by our past. By learning from the struggles of Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, we can choose cooperation over conflict, creation over destruction. Let's honor their legacy by building a world where our shared humanity prevails. Thank you for joining me on this epic journey through prehistory. If this tale of survival and struggle captivated you, Share it with someone who loves history, science, or the story of who we are. Let's keep exploring the past to shape a better future.